thanks for joining us. Today we're going to discuss a little bit about student debt in America and how it is actually a crisis and how ethics and some ethical theories might uh, help us identify the future direction of the crisis and some potential solutions. So since we're pressed for time, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in, give you an outline of what we're going to discuss, and we'll go from there. So we'll start again by defining why student debt in America is a crisis, and then we'll move on and take a look at some historical analysis to try to further our understanding of how we got to the point that student debt is, again, that crisis. Then we will discuss uh, an ethical critique focused on deontology and utilitarianism, and that will help us identify the information for our wrap-up for what potential solutions to the crisis might look like and what the future direction of the issues are. So as many of us are aware, uh, student debt in the United States currently stands at $1.5 trillion, and that's owed by approximately 44 million Americans. Now, when you break down that number across the population, you get an average of $37,000 per student graduating, uh, and the per capita number, uh, which means we divide all outstanding student debt across the entire population, you get roughly $4,900 per person. Uh, so, again, that means that we have an average $37,000 per graduate or $4,900 per capita, which in some respects is, is decidedly unalarming. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when you take those system-level averages um, and try to explain the entire complex issue of student debt in America, it distorts the reality uh, of the issue and, and allows you to theoretically conclude that there is no potential for a uh, financial crisis. Still, in looking from a historical perspective, we see that in 1944, the Servicemen's Readjustment Act, or what's commonly known as the GI Bill, took place. This represented the first really significant government legislation that had a substantial and measurable impact on higher education. Uh, and the primary goals of, of that legislation were to increase uh, graduation rates uh, as, you know, a societal thing post-war. Now, you fast forward 20 years to the Johnson administration, a uh, year or so after JFK's assassination, and you see that the GI Bill didn't have the effects that, that legislators really had hoped, and as such, they moved uh, to compose and pass uh, the 1965 Higher Education Act. Now, the Higher Education Act of 1965 is really seminal legislation and uh, is essentially responsible in large part for the system of higher education finance that we have today. And what we mean by this is that much like the government-sponsored entities that were discussed in the report when drawing comparison against the housing collapse during the Great Recession, uh, the Higher Education Act created uh, Sally May, uh, and that did so as uh, a government-sponsored entity for the purpose of advancing student loans. Now, we don't have time to really discuss all the finer details, again, but those are the primary legislative actions that were responsible for shaping the higher education system that we know today. So if that be the case, and we know that we have <clears throat> a crisis on our hands, then we need to think more about solutions than, than, than historical fact. So that's where the importance of our ethical uh, critique come in. So we chose deontology and utilitarianism here because there are two theories that, one, mesh well together, and because the problem of student loan debt in America is a uh, multifaceted problem, solutions will have to be multifaceted as well. So we need uh, a combination of theories, and frankly, uh, in my view, there are not two that uh, amalgamate better than deontology and utilitarianism. Uh, now, specifically, uh, those two ethical theories, deontology being founded in Kantian philosophy 
and utilitarianism being founded in sort of this principle of maximizing uh, pleasure and minimizing pain, uh, they apply well because the student loan debt issue is one that requires both maximizing good for the most number of people, but also making sure we uh, stay true to that categorical imperative uh, uh, that Kant puts forward or essentially, you know, treating others how you want to be treated and acting so that your actions could be a model for the world. So in this sense, we need to look at solutions that are morally well-intentioned and are practical and also again, best meet that goal of maximizing the good for the maximum number of people. So in considering some examples of potential solutions that meet that ethical and moral test, I was really taken by the Excelsior Scholarship Program uh, enacted in New York State in 2017. That program really does meet the ethical tests as I outlined in the report. And you know, while it is only uh, a year old, that program, and it's kind of too early to determine whether or not it's going to be effective, it, it, it really serves well as a model for the types of programs that would be most desirable moving forward because they really take dead aim at some of the core problems that have created the student loan debt crisis. And also, again, they in stupendous fashion, meet the ethical test of being morally well-intentioned, practically achievable, and, and again, meeting that end of maximizing the good for the maximum number of people. So to give you a little bit of detail about that Excelsior Scholarship, just real quick, it's a state-based program that allows all residents of the state who come from families with less than $125,000 annual income to attend any of the state institutions tuition-free so long as they meet some other uh, logistical sort of requirements. So it's an example of ingenuity at the state level, which I think is important to solving the crisis, uh, and it's one that again meets our ethical tests. So while the overall student debt issue is very complex, uh, if we allow our ethical theories uh, like uh, the ones we just talked about, you know, deontology and utilitarianism and those theories that are, are, are most applicable to scale, uh, then I think that it's an issue that will be able to be solved, uh, maybe not in the near term, but in the long term. So I thank you all for joining us today uh, and dealing with my rambling a little bit. Uh, and that's our take on student debt in America.